Okay, welcome back to the Django inch by inch series. Today we're going to cover off a way to create a dashboard using uh, views dynamically so that we're able to change between different years and different months. Our requirements for this project are to have a user access a button on a web page to select data associated with a given month of a year. That button will then correspond to a given URL in our browser that will be represented by a specific URL pattern in our URLs.py file. The URL pattern will then energize or call our view, and that view will take in the given month that the user selects and bring back the data set with the details as, as well as the total record count. Those are our requirements. So how will the objects in Django take care of our requirements for us? So for the first one, to have the user access a button on the web page, we're going to have a landing page or our main dashboard home page. I'm calling that throughout the rest of this presentation template number one. Then the button will correspond to a given URL pattern. That's going to be on our URL conf or URL configuration in our URLs.py file. That pattern then has associated with it the view that has the logic behind all that we want to do. And then that view in the views.py file will take in the given month that the user selects through the browser and it will bring back in step five the desired data details and the total, total record counts in what I call template number two or our data presentation page. And of course, all of these objects have names and we'll see them as, as we go through, but the names are not important. What's important are the concepts because I want you to be able to get the concepts and then use them for your own purposes. And just to give you a quick glimpse of what we're shooting for here, I'm going to give a live demo at the end. But right now, just let's take a look. The landing page is template number one, the dashboard home page, where we'll have buttons across the top that will have the month of the year, you know, each month of the year. And the one down at the bottom is when we click into one of those given months, it will dynamically call up the data based on our logic in the view. And then we'll be able to see how many total enrollments we have for that given month. We'll be able to see the details and we'll have a button that takes us back to the dashboard. That's all we're going to do here for now. And here we start to dive right into our code. We're going to look at the model and we're going to look at template number one, which is our landing page. So in terms of the model, we have a class called register, which represents a database table with the same name, only lowercase as Django is want to do. So the lowercase table is called register. We have a few fields here. The fields that are important for us are date enrolled, that date time field, and the char field month enrolled. Those are the two that we're going to um, tie into when we talk about our view and we talk about the template coming up. This template is very, very simple. This is the one that produces those um, button groups across the top for the month of uh, for every month of the year of 2018. And you see they correspond here. We have hard-coded uh, URL path for each month of the year. So this is very straight ahead, nothing tricky here. We wanted to present it in this way to be able to maximize the space on the page. Okay, now we'll look at our two different views and our URL config. So the first view is the view that represents template number one. This is the landing page with the buttons across the top. This is a very simple function view, not much going on here. It's called registration dates. It takes the request, as all the function views do, as its first argument. Then it returns render request and its template, which is uh, reg underscore date dot HTML. And we'll get to that in a minute. View number two is really where all the fun stuff happens here. This is the uh, view that corresponds to the second page that will bring back our detail once the user selects the month that they want to see data on. So it's called select month only. It takes one parameter called start month. Start month here equals to start month and, and that's significant because when the user goes to that static URL, you'll see that start month is one of the variables there. That's how we can get this to be a dynamic uh, function. 
So start month equals start month, and then reg date equals our query to the database. And very simple, the register, capital register, um, capital R for register, rather, is our model in question. And we're only dealing with one model in this case. Dot objects is our manager, and we're filtering on the month enrolled field. And the parameter there is going to be start month once again. We're going to let the user dictate what that month will be. Then we have the counter, and we're passing in regdate.count, the count method. Once the list comes back on that page, when the user clicks in, that will tell us how many enrollments we have for the given month. It's very simple. And then we also have the return render here. We have the request. We have the template. And then we have our context that we're passing in with the three vi variables in question. You'll see how we use those in template number two. We have two URL patterns. One corresponds to the first view, right? You see it says views.registration dates in that second section. And the second corresponds to view number two. So the first one very straight ahead. We're just going to slash registration underscore dates. That'll be appended onto Yogi Coder because that's how I have my application set up. And the, the next one will start there, registration dates, and then it just takes the variable start month so that if a user selects January or February or whatever the case is, it will be able to dynamically handle that. And here we have template number two. This is the template that displays the data once the user clicks into a given month. So at the top, you see we're extending, as we do in all the templates in this series, we extend our base.html template. But if we get down into the container and we see that first H3 tag, 2018, and then the variable start month. So this way, if they select February or March or August, that will correspond to whatever uh, button they clicked. So then we have um, the total enrollments with the counter variable. So that comes back, and that will tell us how many, how many um, records from the database correspond to our query. So if it's the month of August or September, whatever the case may be, it'll tell us how many enrollments we have for the given month. The next line, the TD line, is our button back. And you see the hard-coded path back to that first view that we just looked at, Yogi Coder slash registration underscore dates. Next, in the list, we have our for loop for R, which is our iterator in reg date. And again, reg date, as you might remember from the previous page, is the variable that we assign to our query string. Right? So that's the one that's going to bring us back the good stuff that we need, which is the total enrollments for a given month. And then all we did here with the R dot training class, R dot student enrolled, R dot date enrolled, etc., are different fields from that register database table. That's all it is, and that's what gives us the view. So the, an example of a URL a user may access, and, and the part in, in the red box is what will change, right? If they select the January button, which they clearly did here, that will be the path. If they select February, January ch changes to February. If it's the third button, it'll be March, etc. So that's the dynamic piece where the user is able to select any one of the months. So now we get to this place where we say, yeah, you know, we can select all the months for the 2018 calendar year. But what about if we want 2019 or 2020? Is there some way that we can use the same view and the same URL pattern to facilitate that? And the answer is yes. And here's what that would look like. So let's take a good look and see what it is we have to do to change our Django code to make it look like this and to have all the buttons work just as they did when we had only the one year. It's a lot less work than you think. OK, so we're back to template number one. So you should note that this is only part of the template because this code is very repetitive. We could have done this more efficiently using a drop down, for instance, but I chose to have it static. So for that, we simply replicate what we had for 2018 for the other two years. And you notice that I had 2019, 2020, 2020, and I only need to change the one value of the year. So if you look at button number two, you'll see that I have 2018 in these first two stacks. And then down here, I have 
2019. That's all I had to change. Everything else stays the same. So it's pretty easy. And here we take a look at the other things we need to change. So obviously that first urls.py, the one for the landing page, the dashboard landing page stays the same. But in this particular case, the second view changes, the, the path to the second view changes in the URL pattern. So we have, instead of just registration underscore dates that goes straight to the start month variable, we have to intersect this year start variable. Yeah, so we put that right in between those, those two things. So now the path reads registration date, year start, variable and start month variable. It's the same view, views.select month only, same view name. In the views, um, in the second view for select month only, we follow suit here. Now we've changed what this URL is going to look like. So we've changed what the user uses when they go to that URL. All right, we'll have to hard code change that. And then what happens? Then we add this year start variable right? Because we're using it in the URLs pie. We want to use it here. And we see start month equals start month's the same. Now, here's where we get into this um, chaining of filters that Django lets us do. So for reg date, registered objects that filter is the same, but instead of going right to month underscore enrolled equals start month, which is appended at the end as our second filter, our first one is date underscore enrolled underbar underbar year equals our new variable year start. That represents the year, right? 2018, 2019, 2020, what have you. So we link that and then we put the month at the end. So if you're watching closely, you'll see that now this query co coincides with what we have in our URL pattern just above. Counter e equals reg dot count stays the same. We still want to know how many we have back. Just because it's a new year, that shouldn't change. And the only other thing we change there is the year start equals year start, right? We want to bring that back into the context. Other than that, it stays the same. Just want to underscore for this date enrolled underscore underscore year. This is something that Django enables us to do when we have a date. I'm taking the date, right? And I'm stripping off just the year. I don't care about the month. I don't care about the day that they registered. I just want to be able to use that without creating a new variable or a new field in my database because that's not efficient. I just want to be able to use what I already have. So that's that underscore underscore year will only work in the date time field objects in the database. So then you see the only changes to template number two where we bring back the data is to now insert that year. Instead of just having a month, which corresponds only to 2018, now I want the year. Is it January for 2018, for 2019, for 2020? So I put that in there and that's gonna be dynamic as well. If we pick January, it'll be January. If we pick August, it'll be August, etc. And then you see the new URL that the user will have to access. It's no longer Yogi Code or registration underscore dates February or January or March. We have that 2019 inserted in between registration dates and February to correspond to the view and to correspond to our URL.py file. Okay, let's take a tour and see what we have. Here we are back at the dev version of the Yogi Coder website. And here we have our student enrollment dashboard. So we've had this before, right? The January, but let's see how it looks. Yep, one enrollment for January. It tells us the training class, who was enrolled, the date enrolled and the date completed. Back to the dashboard, right? None in July, a whole bunch in September, five total. Let's try another date. None in January here, one in February. We see different dates, yep. This works. I don't think we have any in 2020. They're breaking down the doors to get to the Yogi Coder Django and Python content. So it works, guys. This is wonderful. We're going to keep going onward and upward and try to create presentations that I don't see too many of out there and that interest me. I hope they interest you. If you have any other um, desires or requirements around you know, efforts or, or things that you want to build. Make some suggestions and quite possibly we can learn how to do it together. Thanks so much. See you in the next presentation.